engineering is so boring. Hello everyone, welcome to another Friday new product post here at Sparkfun Electronics. We have a couple things and a mystery box. So let's see what kind of products we have for this week. First up, we have a cape. A cape is a shield, essentially, for a BeagleBone Black. Proto Cape is just a prototyping cape or shield for a BeagleBone Black that has just the basic things you need to start prototyping different designs and whatnot. It even has the little um, ID registration chip here. So what that does is when you attach this to your BeagleBone, you can actually have it identify this particular board, and then you can have it load a preset um, driver set or something like that or software so that you don't have to change your software on your BeagleBone Black every time you switch on a different cape. So you could have like, you know, five or ten of these things, and they could all have an individual unique ID, and every time you put it on, it's like, oh, I know what that board is, and it changes its code around. And we also have all the headers on the site, which I think we released a week or two weeks ago. So if you're looking to do some prototyping with your BeagleBone Black, check out the ProtoCape. What's in the box? This is the Bartendro. The Bartendro is a peristaltic pump that you can control with your Arduino. There it is. This is the pump itself. It also comes with five feet of plastic tubing that is food safe. And we also have a couple of nuts right there that fit on the end of the pump. So what is a peristaltic pump? So if we take off this little mechanism here, we can see that we have a tube that runs through this mechanism, and when this turns, these two little green knobs actually press and squeeze against the tube. So unlike traditional pumps where you have some sort of impeller actually pushing or expelling the liquid through it, this is non-contact. So you can run sticky things through it, you can run alcohols through it, you can run all sorts of different things through the pump, and you don't have to worry about any kind of contamination that the pump or you know the grease inside the pump might cause you since it is a non-contact or it is not in contact with the actual liquid. This is the pump mechanism that just kind of snaps on the outside like that. And then on the back side, you can see that we have a motor, a gear assembly, and then the PCB. For connections, we have an RJ45 jack that talks back to um, your main control center or whatever it might be. And then we have just a couple other little connections on here. So I'm going to crack this open and show you exactly what it does and um, how it moves the pump. So first thing we're going to do is unplug the motor. And then we're going to remove these two screws. Motor comes off like that. You can see it's pretty standard. And you can see the gear head inside here. This is actually a planetary gear head, which is actually pretty surprising. Um, and then we have two more screws right there that we need to take off. So then this removes. And there we have the gear head with the um, drive shaft. And then this frees up the actual PCB. So it has this nice little rubber O-ring. 
and on the back side we can actually see some Hall effect sensors here. These four Hall effect sensors correspond to magnets that go right here on the pump assembly. With the two magnets and the four Hall effect sensors, we're getting somewhere around eight individual steps, let's say, per revolution of this pump, and that equates to somewhere around 0.5 milliliters accuracy in terms of how much the smallest amount we can dispense, the repeatability is about one milliliter. So if you're looking to dispense a set amount of liquid, your repeatability is gonna be somewhere around one milliliters. Now, if you run this very fast, you do have a little bit of overshoot because the motor takes a little bit of time to actually stop. There's not a break on the motor. So you might see somewhere around two milliliters if you're running it fast. There's a couple different things that you can do to overcome this you can do what a gas pump does where it fuels up really fast and as it gets towards the end of the dispensing, it actually slows down and then precisely fills up the last amount. So you can do something like that or you can just set the PWM value to a little bit slower to get a little bit more accurate dispensing. Typically, peristaltic pumps are useful in applications, like I said before, where you don't want the pump to come into contact with the liquid. This is very useful in scientific applications, medical applications, and a lot of food safe applications. This is of course labeled the Bartendro, so it has a focus towards dispensing alcohol or other friendly beverages, but you could also use it for scientific dispensing and also uh, medical applications if you're really that brave. This is the Synergizer. It's a Synergy promotion device that I developed for, well, the office. Four people have to decide that it's time for, a, well, a break, and then when they've all inserted their keys, and lit the lights, then the robot will pour a beverage for those people. It's based on the uh, new Bartendro dispenser that we're carrying. The Bartendro dispenser is a smart peristaltic pump. The nice thing about peristaltic pumps is that they're self-priming and they're volumetric. And what that basically means is that they don't mind if they have to pump some air to get down to the fluid that they're dispensing and also that the viscosity of the fluid doesn't matter because it's pumping it by volume. There's actually a rubber tube inside the pump that's being uh, sort of rolled so that it pushes a set volume of fluid through the pump at a time. So you can time the number of revolutions on the pump and actually accurately dispense a certain volume of your beverage. The frame is made out of Actobotics parts, which provide a nice stable structure for everything to work inside of. Uh, I use the Actobotics smooth belt and motor mounts to create this uh, linear actuator so that I can move the pour spout along the bottom where the cups are lined up. On the back of this rail, I have a series of reed switches, and there's actually a magnet on the slider. So the machine knows what position the pour spout is in so that it never misses and pours tequila all over the table. There's also a chiller built into this machine, which I built using one of our CPU fan heatsink setups uh, with a thermoelectric cooler on the back of it. And the tubes actually run past the thermoelectric cooler and uh, as the tequila moves through the machine, uh, in theory it gets chilled by that on its way out to be dispensed. Uh, I'm running the whole thing using an Arduino. The Arduino is just sending serial commands to the Bartendro dispenser, and I'm using the uh, full text control mode of the Bartendro dispenser instead of the uh, packet control mode, which is what you would use if you had a full Bartendro setup. The nice thing about the text control mode is that if you're communicating with only one dispenser, you don't have to deal with the dispenser ID or doing a checksum to construct the packets that you need to control it. You just send a string of text that describes what you want the pump to do and a couple of numbers that give it the parameters to do that. So the Arduino is the brain. I'm using a thermoelectric cooler for the chiller. Of course, our new Bartendro dispenser for the pump and Actobotics parts for the frame and the mechanics.